Hi guys, welcome back to Chai with Ping. And this episode, I have the honor. After such a long time, I can finally collaborate with another podcaster, Duncan and Truman. Host a Mandarin Chinese podcast called Dare to Travel, Lang Yo Tian Ya. If you're interested in some of the backpacker stories or traveling stories, it is the right place to go. And today, Duncan shares so much about his growing up upbringings and the cultural differences, and also like how he walked through his journeys as an Asian American here in the U.S. and then later moved back to Asia in in Taipei, Taiwan.、Um, so it was a very candid and heartfelt conversation. So I hope you like it. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. And also,、um, just a little commercial here that my Mandarin channel has changed to Chai with Ping C N on Instagram. So if you read Chinese or listen to Mandarin, please do follow me over there. Let's get started. Welcome to Chai with Ping. This is Ping Robert. In this podcast, I cover immigrant stories, cross-cultural experiences, and minority issues. Join me with a cup of chai and take a listen. Okay, it's recording now. Welcome back to Chai with Ping. My name is Ping, and thank you so much for tuning in to Chai with Ping with another episode. And if you like. Already, so that's great. If you haven't, then please do follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, or email me by chaiwithping at gmail dot com. And also, you know, if you follow or subscribe to my channel, then you'll get the new episode where this is coming from. Today, I have a special guest all the way from San Francisco to Taiwan, and he's now in Taiwan. I don't even know where he is. We just finished recording my episode on their channel. Their channel is called Dare to Travel. So if you want to follow them, please do click Dare to Travel. And I think it's a more of a Mandarin episode. So if you type Lang Yo Tian Ya, then you will be able to find it. And all the links will be in the episode notes. So let's welcome Duncan. Hello, hi, I'm Duncan. <laughs> Have you been interviewed before? Actually, talking about interview, talking about podcast, this is the first one for me. Yay! Thank you so much for giving me your first opportunity and first, <laughs> you know, showcase. I've done like storytelling. I I, used, I did I did a few share like storytelling in Taiwan and I, REI. You know REI, the sports shop. I don't know if you have it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. REI, yes, yes, the cool. Yeah, yeah I, did,、yes. I did like four different、uh, storytelling at REI.、Oh. But I've never,、okay. I've never done a podcast interview before. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that we have REI in in Taiwan. Oh no, no, no! In San Francisco. No, in, in San, San Francisco. Francisco. Yeah, Got yeah. it. Okay, so I don't know that much about you. I just know that you were born in Hong Kong, grew up in Macau, and moved to San Francisco, and now in Taiwan, married to a Taiwanese wife. So why don't you start with a little background for us to kind of have a structure in our mind? Okay. Okay. So. I'm Duncan. I was born in Hong Kong,、uh, so Cantonese is my first language. So Mandarin is like my third language.、Um, I was born in Hong Kong, and and then after that,、um, well, my my parents are from Macau, but back in the days when you were born in Hong Kong, you get a British passport. So that was the reason why they went over, and you know, I gave birth, and then went after after I was born in Hong Kong, I I grew up in Macau. Until I was twelve, and then I moved to San Francisco.、Uh, I didn't know why I was born in Hong Kong until I asked my mom a couple of years ago. I said,、like, "Why? Why wasn't I born in Macau?" And she said, "Well, back in back in the days, Macau didn't have any any university. So if I have a Hong Kong passport, if I'm a Hong Kong citizen, I can go to a university in Hong Kong. So that will be easier for my education. So after." Uh, living in Macau for twelve years, I well, my parents decided to send me to San Francisco because my aunt and my uncle, my cousins, they're all living there, and and I I didn't do good in school. Like I I wasn't good at memorizing. In Asia, you memorize a lot of things. All you do, all you do in school is just memorize, memorize, and memorize. I could I couldn't do that. So I got I did bad in school. I got bad grades, and you know they decided you know there's more opportunities and. The United States, so they sent me there. Lived in San Francisco 
until I was like 18, 19. And then I went, I transferred over to uh, Santa Barbara. I went to UCSB, University of California, Santa Barbara. And then I moved to LA for work. Uh, and I lived in New York as well. Um, I used to work at Apple, this computer company. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and after wow. I worked there for five years, I I moved around in in uh, in the United States because of work. And when I when I was thirty, I decided I wanted to uh, do something else. I wanted a different kind of life, so I left Apple and I moved to Taiwan and I backpacked everywhere around the world whenever I can. Okay, let's backtrack a little bit. What do yeah. you do at? In Apple, like, are uh, you an engineer? No, 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 no. So at, at Apple, I I did. I was a Mac genius. I kind of worked my way up as a sales associate. They call it. They call it the. I guess they call it the. Uh, I don't know what they call. Oh, they used to call us Mac specialists. So I basically start from the bottom, and I I went to what they call Mac genius. Mac genius is basically you do tech support. You do tech support for, let's say, you have a problem with your computer. You make an appointment. You come in and see me. I am. I can help you fix your computer. I'm kind of like a computer doctor. And after that, I also did some training. Uh, they transferred me over to New York, mm. uh, and I did some training in uh, Beijing. At that time, there was it was 2008. I went right before the Olympics. Apple was like really expanding at that time, so they need. Mm. Somebody that can speak Mandarin. Well, at least at that time, I thought I could speak Mandarin. I went to Beijing and trained, you know, 200 new employees. Not me, but a team, a team of people. So that trip kind of changed my life. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. Wow. So you have moved so many times. Do you yes. ever feel lost? Uh, yes. Yes. I, uh, I mean, I was young at that time, so it was okay for me. I, I feel mm-hmm. like... I can move around. I can. I have the energy. I'm healthy. Mm. It's now. It's time to explore and live th- at different places. Yeah. But have I feel, well, do I feel lost? I don't know if I feel lost, but mm. Mm, uh, tiring sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Because I only move like two other countries. I already feel like there's a mixed up with cultures and all that. Is there any? Like memory that you will take from your roots that that you like you will cherish during during those two years or if many years. Yeah, so two thousand and eight. I guess there's two. There's two. I would talk about two parts. One, the first part, like I said earlier, that trip to Beijing changed my life. Uh, growing up in the United States as an immigrant, uh, I pushed away my Asian culture as far as I could. I pushed it away, so far away. I forgot that I was Chinese. And growing up in the United States, they they really teach you about confidence. So I was, yeah. I have a lot of confidence. I play a lot of basketball too. That's what they teach mm-hmm. you, confidence, confidence. You go out there, you should think that you are the best player out there. So, you know, I was mm. trained that way. So when I went to Beijing, I was like, oh, I can speak Mandarin. I told my managers, hey, I guess we're doing what when I got there, I didn't know how to speak it. <laughs> People <laughs> speak so fast. Yeah. Uh, even now, you know, when mo- a lot of times when sp- people speak so fast, I can't really understand everything. But mm. at that time, I went there. I'm like, oh my God, everybody speaks so fast. I couldn't understand anything. And I had to train uh, the new employees in Mandarin. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh, wow. oh, oh. So, after that trip, I realized that, man, I don't know anything about the world. I was mm. living in this small little bubble at Apple. I knew everything about Apple and that's it. So I came back to the U.S. and I, I told Apple, I was like, hey, transfer me to, to, the, to Beijing. But, you know, 2008 uh, was a financial crisis. Apple decided they didn't want to expand at the, during that time. So I'm like, OK, I need to move to Asia. I need to learn more Mandarin because... I just need to be better in Mandarin. I just felt embarrassed, you know? So after after that, I 2010 is when I left Apple. I, I was like, I don't want to wait anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to Asia. So when I, I, I backpacked a little bit uh, for a couple of months, and then I moved to Taiwan because a friend of mine used to teach English in Taiwan. So she told me about her life, and she really enjoyed 
living in Taiwan. She's Taiwanese. And she told me about her experience. And I was like, oh, I want to also experience this. And I came here. I have a, I'm Asian, right? I have an Asian face. And my Mandarin was really bad. And I remember that my confidence just like shot down because everywhere I went, everybody speaks so fast. I couldn't understand anything. And I Again, I felt embarrassed. And I said, okay, I can't live like this. So I took classes. I went to Wenhua Dashue, right, which is like the, the near near Dan Park in Taipei. Yeah. I took classes mm -hmm. for six months, every day, yeah. three hours. And I, you know, I, cause I speak Cantonese, right? I grew up in Macau, right? So I can write some characters, but I don't know. I didn't know the pinyin. So I was in like level three, but I didn't know stuff that is in level one. So I have to go take the level three class. And in the afternoon, I have to go back to the level one, the basic, basic to learn the pinyin because I couldn't hear the shi, chi, qi. Like I couldn't hear the difference, but now mm. I can. Yeah. So those are the two highlights, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm curious to know because you said that growing up, you kind of pushed away that Chinese yeah. or Asian culture from your roots. Yeah. Why? Because I was embarrassed, right? Mm -hmm. I got to San Francisco. San Francisco is culturally, very culturally diverse, but it's also, also culturally very segregated. Mexicans live here, Russians live here, Japanese live here, Asians live here, Blacks live here, Whites live here. Uh, I don't know if uh, you guys lived in San Francisco before, been to San Francisco, but the reality of San Francisco is very segregated. It's like they call it the melting pot, but different people diff yeah. uh, live in different neighborhoods, right? Mm. Um, I didn't know how to speak English so well. Uh, so uh, as a kid... You have peer pressure, right? You want to be cool. Mm, you want to yeah. fit in. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, kids make fun of me. And um, at the first two years, I went to Chinese schools on Saturday because my parents didn't want me to forget Chinese. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I went there to, for two years on Saturdays. And then I felt I, I just felt like after two years, my my school, I, I was I was in high school. And then to me, it was really, really difficult because everything is in English, right? English was like a second language to me. I never went, took any ESL classes. I went to private schools. So I, I felt like, okay, if I need to be good at English, I need to just forget about Chinese. I need to be good in English and I need to push it away. Like I, I didn't understand. I was a kid, right? Kids make fun of my Chinese accent. I don't want to speak with Chinese accent. I want to push it away, right? And also one thing, one thing was that I knew that I won't get picked on if I was good at one thing, basketball. I'm a, I guess I'm a pretty tall kid. So I knew that if I'm good at basketball, nobody will make fun of me. So what I did was I practiced basketball every day. I got, and I got good at it. I practice, practice. And in a, in the U S if you're good, if you're good at a sport, people don't bully you. That's, oh, and totally. that's what happened. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you out, people were protecting me, right? I play with yeah, yeah. Mexican guys, black guys that are taller than me. They're bigger than me, but they mm. see me like hanging with them. They see me playing with them and I can, I can play with them. And after a few weeks, they're like, Oh, this guy can play. Right. And, and yeah, nobody yeah. picked on me. Nobody laughed at me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. What did your parents say to you? Because like you probably start speaking English to them or no, no, you? no, no. My parents was in Macau. My, no, my parents oh. was in Macau. I live, I okay. grew up in, in the house with my aunt and my cousins. So they all speak English. No, Cantonese. No. Cantonese. You speak, we oh. speak Cantonese at home. So it's like almost like a two, you have two faces. Yes. Like one person at home and one person at school is a, very yes, yes. Which you know, now I'm glad that I speak that I spoke Cantonese at home because mm. language is a very important tool, right? The the power of communication. One thing I learned in when I was in Beijing was like, man, communication is so powerful, right? If I just forget about Cantonese, then you know I, I'm at a disadvantage. Now the world is different. 
know, now the world is small in a sense because the whole world is connected, right? Through WhatsApp, yes. through Facebook, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So at that at that time, I didn't understand, but now I do. <laughs> mm, yeah, because you already share some of the challenges that you feel embarrassed with your English, or you know, you don't want to be looked at, and mm. so that's why you play basketball and you're good at it. Are there any? Um, were there any challenges that you faced because of your racial identities? Uh, well, yeah, because every time, every time I step on a basketball court, I talk about basketball a lot because that's, that was my life back then, right? Every time I have to prove something, right? I can't just go out there and play. People won't let me play with them, right? You're a Chinese, you can't play, right? It's kind of like I don't know if people remember Yao Ming. You know, just like when he first got to the NBA, people talk so much crap about him. Like Charles Barkley talked so much crap about him. He said he would even kiss a donkey if he, if he like scored thir- score thirty points in the game or some oh sort of. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, you know, obviously he he scored more than thirty points or whatever yeah. whatever bet he bet on. And then Charles Barkley's uh, co-workers at ESPN, he actually they actually got him a donkey on the show, and he had to wow. kiss the donkey's butt. I feel sorry for the donkey, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So every wow. time, every time, every day I play basketball, I have to prove something. Mm, I have yeah. to work hard uh, just because I have an Asian face and I'm not yeah. supposed to be good at basketball. I'm supposed to be good at math, right? Mm-hmm. So I have to fight every day. It was tiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you struggle not to see any media representation from Asia or like Asian American? Mm-hmm. Um, as for entertainment wise not really because at home i watch mm-hmm. a lot of cantonese series cantonese ah, episodes okay. <laughs> with yeah, my cousin yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so you still have that kind of like media to enjoy and entertain yeah yeah i, I definitely and i definitely um, noticed that obviously in my high school i went to mm-hmm. a high school called reardon high school there's no there's no chinese playing basketball i was the only one wow i didn't play for any school team I yeah. tried out. I didn't make it. There's, mm. I think there's a racial issue on that. But I I felt like after I play with the other guys in, on campus, I was respected more because people knew people knew I can play basketball. Kind of like Jeremy Lin, right? Right? Yeah. Jeremy, look, at, look at Jeremy <laughs> Lin, right? Yeah. But he, still, he, like, I just you yeah, need sorry, to try sorry. so hard, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy Lin will tell you this. Every, every college basketball game, People talk so much trash to him every game. But he said when he got to the NBA, nobody said anything. Because, you know, everything that an NBA player said, the media would know. right? The whole world would know. Yeah, he, he had a lot of struggles on the basketball court as well. Yeah. <laughs> but it also feels a little awkward to me because it's just like being Asian American or you, like you have to try so hard to prove yourself. Yes. And then until you get to that point and then people stop talking. That's right. And it, and if you you happen to have an injury or you just didn't score that well, then you didn't cut that mark, and you still just kind of be among that only one Asian American group. That's right. That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's brutal. I yeah. have respect for you. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't understand what I had to go through. Right, mm. like people. Oh yeah, oh make uh, you live in you live in the U.S. Oh, it's nice to grow up there. Well, kids have struggles. You know, every er, my struggle was race, right? But other kids have different struggles, right? People, you know, white kids get bullied, black kids get bullied, right? But I just experienced it in a different way. But luckily, I was able to find a way to earn my respect. I can say that, yeah. Yeah. Did you wish that your family were there with you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or... Yeah. But it was. It. Was, I'm the only child, so it, oh, it, yeah. It was. Okay. It was. It was rough in the beginning, uh, not having my parents around. Yeah. And you get used to it. You get mm. too used to it. I basically my parents and I. Well, my dad passed away already, but my parent, my mom and I, we grew apart. Mm-hmm. I remember she took. She would come and see me once a year. She mm-hmm. took Chinese book to to oh, oh read this, read this, show, teach me Chinese, and then uh, I I threw I threw on a side, right? And she would ask me. She, well, she told me the story a couple of years, well, recently, and then I said, well, you know, I, I was young, man. Who are you? Like you didn't you didn't come to you didn't come to you didn't grow uh 
well, can't say she didn't raise me, but you weren't by my side when I was growing up. Who are you telling, trying, trying to tell me to learn Chinese, right? Like my mom and I's relationship is really good now. But when I moved to Asia, uh, when I first moved to Asia, uh, we didn't really know each other because I was in the U.S. She was in Macau, right? So I tell I, now nowadays I tell I sometimes I tutor online or I tutor mm. like kids. I said I know you want to send your kid to the U.S., but don't send him just like that. If you're gonna go, go together. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they basically kind of sacrifice the time being with you, but also to support you to be in the U.S. But then you miss them even more. That, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I'd rather be. Wow. Poor with them together, then mm-hmm. live rich without them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! Thank you for sharing. That's very personal, and thank you for opening up to talk about it. Were yeah. you ever angry as a teenager because like all these things happening to you?、Mm, was I angry? Nah, I wasn't.、No. I wasn't angry. Yeah. I, I do. I, mean, I guess I couldn't understand. I still remember certain things like the first day of school.、Mm. Um, yeah, I, I remember. I remember those those days where you know that we sit in a circle in the first day, and then you have to introduce yourself. Right? I was really nervous. I remember those days, those moments. I was also very lucky too because I have friends. You know, he went. I, I have a friend named Kenneth. He went there when he was six, but his English was bad still. Because you know he he would go back to Hong Kong every year. He hang out, he hung out with with you know his Hong Kong friends, right? They always speak Chinese, right? So your English really never improved, right? So I was lucky. I was I play basketball every day, and I mean I hang out with him too. But a lot of times I was on the basketball court. It was my life. <laughs> I play for teams and things like that. Yeah. Wow. Share. An example that you got supported by somebody, or was there any support for you? Mm, growing up in the house,、uh, my aunt has to work all the time.、Mm. We were the first generation, first gen immigrant, right? So, guess what? You go, you go to America, you buy a house, everybody lives in it. That's the first generation immigrant. She worked a lot. She worked. She worked at a factory, and you know, she would go to China. She worked in Chinatown. She would buy a lot of. She would buy a lot of food and. Yeah, it's it's heavy. It's heavy. Now, why why I know it's heavy? That's because when we get old, when we grow older, you know, I would take her to Chinatown to to buy to buy、uh, groceries. She she gotta go to Chinatown because food, fruits and vegetables in Chinatown is just cheaper and fresher. So she she gotta go to go to Chinatown. So I would help her carry. I'm like, man, I will realize. When when I was a kid, like she didn't have a car, she took a bus, she took the light rail home. Man, it's so heavy. I felt it was heavy, so she, of course, to her, it's really heavy.、Uh, talking about support, I grew up with my cousins. They are older than me, so they play basketball. They play all kinds of sports. I play with them, so I got better really quick. Because you know how how do you get better? You play with somebody better than you. Uh, they, I don't know if they support me, but they would take me. They would take me to their activities. So I guess it's a type. It's a type of support. <laughs> and, I, and then I, I play base, baseball, and、mm. you know, I guess we call it tag football and basketball with them. So they、yeah. they support me in that way.、Mm. Yeah, but but for school and grades, I I was on my own. My cousin would help me with my English sometimes, but they they were in school at that time too. So. Yeah, I was I was on my own most of the time. Yeah, wow. So now I'm gonna transition to another section because you're already married, and、mm-hmm. I just wonder, like, is there any root culture that you bring into your new family, <laughs> or or anything? Then you know, maybe American culture. Oh, for sure. Mm. For sure,、uh, yes. I recently got married to, to a Taiwanese wife.、Uh, we met traveling in New Zealand. She's Taiwanese, but uh, uh, her sister and I are friends, and and we were traveling, and that's how we all met in the camper van. 
So when I first met her, we spent two weeks in a small little space and really got to know each other quick. Uh, and let's say uh, something that I bring. Uh, some sometimes it's funny when we communicate. You know, I can speak Mandarin, but my tones are not correct a lot of times. And you mm. know, I would say, I would say, for example, the 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 clipper for the for the clothes and it's called in Chinese it's called jia zi and then mm. also the thong that you use to barbecue is it's yeah. also called jia zi right so sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes we would like misunderstood each other for a few days mm. like like a, uh, for example seed zhong zi and zhong zi <laughs> uh, I, I i still i still get it mixed up yeah so zhong zi is the seed yeah zhong, oh, zhong zi is, the, yeah, yeah. is the something that you eat yeah, 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 and then and then yeah. and then bread too, bao zi and bao zi, yeah. right? The newspaper oh, yeah. and bread, right? I still get yeah. confused, right? But you're still like improving a lot already. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. So let's. Sorry, I should have asked you another question before that last question. It's like how you how did did you say your wife is a Taiwanese New Zealander? No, 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 no. She's no. she's she's ta- she's Taiwanese, but. Okay. Uh, she traveled to New Zealand. Okay. And then yeah. that's how you met. That's how we met. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about that. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> and then we'll come back to this question. Yes. So, okay. I actually met my wife, uh, I would say six years ago. I, I was living in Kaohsiung and she came to, well, I, her, okay, let, I'm going to use their name because it's easier to describe. So Stacy is my wife. Tracy is her sister. So Tracy and I, we are friends. We met in Hua Lian. I used to work at a hostel and Tracy was one of our guests. And, you know, we, we became friends. We kept in touch. So one time I was in, living in Kaohsiung, Tracy brought Stacy you know, because they went to Kanteen and they stopped by Kaohsiung and then they they say hi to me. They came to my apartment and I was like, oh, hi. But there there was nothing. We say hi and then we had a meal and they, they left. I never seen her after that. And then 2019, I talked to Tracy because Tracy and I, we still kept in touch. Uh, Tracy was like, hey, we're going to New Zealand. We need another driver. And I was like, for a camper van? And she was like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I want to do a camper van for so long. Usually when I'm back, when I backpack, I travel along. I love to travel along. But for a camper van, you need more people, right? To share the costs, right? So I said, oh, man, I'm in. And that was in January 2019. And then in, in May 2019, I joined the trip. And there was three, uh, there's three girls and me. We were, camp- were in a camper van, and you- when you're in a camper van, you just get to know somebody really quick, the good and bad. You're with them 24 hours a day, right? So Stacy and I, we we drove, and then Tracy and her friend, they cook, right? <laughs> we have jobs for everybody, and we get along really well, luckily. Mm. And yeah, Stacy and I really got to know each other, and... Yeah, that's how it started. Well, after that, she went back to Taiwan. Right, I wasn't that trip. I was ne- I was there for twenty five days. They they only came for two weeks, and I was worried because I was like, man, I really like this girl. How how are we gonna do this? Uh, but she 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 lives in Taipei, so she moved back to Taipei, and then I I, I was going back to Taipei anyway because I was I have friends there. I usually spend my summers in Taiwan. For the past few years, I've been doing that. So, you know, when I was, you know, going after her, I would ride, my, ride a U-bike to see her and we have, you know, we'll go hiking, we have dinner Aww. together. Yeah. yeah, that's how we, at, at one point, we saw each other 30 days in a row. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then that summer, I had plans to move to Hua Lian, yeah. uh, to, li- to live in Hua Lian because I love Hua Lian because I love the nature and and I follow up my plan. I didn't stay in Taipei because of her. She came to visit me and I took her I took her hiking. I showed her around Hua Lian. I took her uh, to hitchhike for the first time to Taidong. And, you know, we had a good time and we got together. That's, yeah, Aww. I worked hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's also around the time that you're backpacking in Taiwan? Did yeah, I yeah, yeah. Correctly? I was backpacking. Oh, okay. I was living, I was living in... 
Well, I go on a lot of trips. Yeah. So I would I would be my base I would base myself in Huadian and I would go to different trips. Because yeah. Huadian is a place where I can go biking and go hiking and go swimming. It's mm -hmm. it's an amazing place. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How did you decide to get married? Isn't that a like a huge step? Because yeah. that's a cross cultural. Even though you know we're all like Chinese ethnic people, but mm -hmm. it's a huge cultural difference. Yeah, yeah. I guess I never thought I would marry a Taiwanese girl. Mm. Um, just because I just it. feel like yeah. I just feel like Asian girls are not interested in me a lot of times. Because, now who's interested in you? <laughs> well, well, because we have we have different we have different uh, a lot of Asian girls and I we have different uh what's the word? different interests. I like to go I I like to go get tan, you know, I like to be under the sun. I like to climb mm. mountains. I okay. like to I like to explore unknown places. I like yeah. I like a carrying backpack to travel around. That's that's yeah. like suffering to a lot of people. Oh yeah, <laughs> but to yes. me it, it's fun, right? So it, it's mm. it was yeah. I, I never thought I never thought uh, uh, she would want to marry me <laughs> just because I'm like a wanderer, right? A backpack, right? I wander around the world. Um. So yeah, I felt like she's the one i feel like we get along really well traveling mm -hmm. and yeah. she's really mature and i feel like i felt like this is the girl so, yeah yeah <laughs> but then you have to drop everything um i don't know if you have to drop everything or not because you're already backpacking so you probably already quit the job in the u.s yes yes and what well, were you doing well when i met her when i met her uh, actually she came to san francisco with her sister for okay. one day Mm -hmm. In I think two thousand and eight, um, uh, I guess after that we talked. We we like online. We we chat a little bit, uh, but yeah, I was basically during during those during the past few years, I've been working in San Francisco as a tour guide. I would spend six months in San Francisco, and I would spend six months traveling. Six months, you know, to Indonesia or other places, New Zealand, and then I would I would live in Taiwan for three months, and then I move back to the U.S. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, wow. I was doing that. That is so cool. Yeah. Well, Did I'm you single, get any right? certification? Did, yeah, but like, is, is it that easy to get into the travel industry as a tour guide? Uh, for me, it was yeah because okay. in San Francisco, there was a it's a high, there's a high demand for tour yes. guides. A lot uh, of tourists come. I was a bike tour guide. Okay, um, there's a story to that. It's funny. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. How okay. how did it become a bike tour guide? I have a friend. Her name is Kathy. She came to visit me in San Francisco. Well, she didn't visit me, but she visited a friend and I saw her Facebook. I was like, hey, I'm in San Francisco. She's like, okay, let's meet up. So I took her on a bike ride. It's San Francisco is amazing when you go for a bike ride. So I took her on a bike ride. Uh, she's like, you should be a bike tour guide. You know, she's like, I'm not paying you today, but you should get paid for this. So I was like, okay, whatever. I just kind of ignore her, right? And now, and then I think another friend came and I show, I walked, I walked to Fishman's Wharf in San Francisco and I saw bikes, bicycle shops. And I was like, oh, okay. So they have like a little stand, right? And then I asked, I asked this girl, I was like, hey, are you guys hiring for tour guys? She, it, was, it was in February at that time. And she was like, not right now, but in a month or two, we will be. So I gave her my phone number and she called me in April. So I went, I went to you know, one of the group rides. I just went with them twice, once or twice. And then uh, I was on my way. It's like a contractor, right? You, you get paid when you work. Yeah. So I started, I started doing that and I was like, oh, the money is pretty good and it's fun. I get, I get to exercise every day and we're biking across Golden Gate Bridge. I never get sick of it because it's, it's like a beautiful ride. It is. Yeah. So yeah. I, was, I was making money like that. Yeah. Six oh, months, I would I would do that almost every day. Yeah, it, yeah. it's hard work. Yes, but, but you get enough to take off for another six months out of a year. Yeah, yeah, I do that, and I also I also drive Uber part time. So I would sometimes I would I, I live a little bit outside of San Francisco, right? So I would mm. sometimes drive Uber, drive out yeah. there, pick up a passenger, drive out to San Francisco. Yeah. Park my car. I would do a bike ride, and then after that, I will Uber more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's really cool. I mean, this is like an 
Yeah, independent contractor and and you know self employment combined. Yeah, yeah, pe- yeah people. Yeah. A lot of people complain, say they don't they don't make money driving Uber. I'm like, yeah. no, that's 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 BS. You yeah. you just don't know how to make money. You just, you just know you need to know when to drive. Like I don't drive Friday night, Saturday nights because I don't like to drive drunk people around. Mm-hmm. I don't drive mm-hmm. during that time. Yeah. Like I I just drive the times that I know I make the most money. Like I I, I average you can make. You can make like thirty five an hour, you know. I average yeah. about like thirty an hour, but yeah, yeah. but you know, so on a good day, it's like thirty yeah. to thirty five. But you can make good money doing yeah, yeah, yeah. doing a tour, tour guy. Not does, doesn't doesn't yeah, have yeah. to be a bicycle tour guy. It could be any tour guy. Yeah, um, driving Uber or Lyft or being a contractor. You know, you, yeah. you just know how to make money. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. When is the best time to drive Uber around San Francisco? <laughs> 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 uh, for you, our answer. For you, our answer. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, driving in San Francisco. Well, I like I said, I don't drive in San Francisco. Uh, okay. What I what like I said, I don't like to drive drunk people around. I like to yeah. drive in the morning, early in the morning, like five o'clock in the morning. Uh, Not like weekdays people. either, because I don't mm-hmm. I don't want to drive people to work because there's too many yeah. cars. I drive okay. on the weekends. Uh, I drive on the so weekends. They have to travel. Uh, yeah, if the the trains is not, it doesn't run on, especially on Sunday. Business is mm-hmm. good on Sunday mornings because yeah, uh, the BART we call it Bay Area Rapid Transit, it doesn't run on Sundays until eight o'clock. Well, people okay. need still need to go to the airport, right? Yes. Guess how they get to the airport? Uber. Oh, so I and drive. It's a longer distance. Yes, long distance. Uh, mm-hmm. In my area, especially where I, I live in an area called Dublin, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's East Bay. So people need Uber. I would turn on the app on Saturday, Sunday, depends, right? Um, I would turn on the app and then there's usually within seconds, I'll, I'll get a request because I'm the, the only one around the area. And a lot of people live in my area. <laughs> got it is that also why you wake up so early every day now uh, uh it's, it's, a, it's a habit it's a habit okay. i like to wake up early ah okay yeah wow that is so cool but then so you you had the business over there already and then you set up your life pattern then how did you decide to move to taiwan well when you get married you just kind of talk about it and then you decide to move well i lived in taiwan before so I mentioned before in 2010, I lived in Taipei. I lived in Kaohsiung. I also lived in Huarin before. So I lived in Taiwan before. So moving back here wasn't a big deal because I would come I would come to Taiwan at least once a year for a few months. I have a lot of friends here in Kaohsiung. I have friends in Huarin. Uh, and I said, okay, with this girl, I am not going to do long distance. Uh, I, long distance doesn't work. To me, it doesn't work. It only work for a short period of time. But if you don't have a common goal, if you don't have a goal of moving together in one in in the same city, it's not going to work. So I said, okay, I think this girl is worth it. I'm going to just. I plus I like living in Taiwan anyway. I said, okay, uh, yes, I have to give up some things. Yes, uh, making money in San Francisco, it's a lot. I got make it way more. It's a lot easier, but the co- cost of living is also higher, right? In Taiwan, cost cost of living is lower, and you know she 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 told me right off the bat. She's like, I'm, I don't have any intentions of moving to San Francisco or living in the U- United States. And I was like, I understand, and I said, you know, I think it's worth it, and I'm just gonna just take a leap of faith and just come, mm. <laughs> and I did. Oh, yeah, yeah, wow. <laughs> Then what do you do in Taiwan? Well, so, can you can you actually work without? Huh? I don't. You're one of the few people that I talk to who are working and married to a Taiwanese who is not Taiwanese. Oh, really? Really? Okay. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about that work situation. So you know, you get a work permit. Right? Yeah. You get a job, for example, teaching English. Uh-huh. You get a you get a job and they'll apply for a work permit for you and then you can work. It's 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 a pretty simple process in Taiwan. You get a work permit, they can send you a letter, you get a, you know, they we call it the the alien certificate record. Yeah. A, yeah. Oh no. It, it, it's like a, we call it ARC. So if you yeah. have an ARC, it's like your your right to stay in Taiwan. If you have a job, you can stay. It's like many parts of the world, if you yeah. get a job, you can stay. But I think the getting a job in Taiwan. 
uh, as an English teacher is not yeah. too difficult. Okay. Yeah. Got so it. do you it's, need it's a not... sponsorship from a company? Yes. Because like, like getting it here in the U.S. like H one B the work visa is yeah. really hard. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you still need a sponsor here, but it's mm-hmm. not as complicated as the U.S. They, they don't have a quota in the U.S. Yeah. They have a quota, right? Yeah. 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 But they, in they Taiwan, they don't, have, they don't have a quota. And things okay. you can get, you can get it done pretty quick. Get you get Got the it. you get the the permanent residency, and then you can apply for the health health insurance here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know about the insurance in yeah, the yeah, US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's, know that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what do you do after moving to Taiwan? So after in Taiwan, after in Taiwan, I, I moved here and I started teaching English part time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, cool. Yeah. Yeah, when I first moved here, and obviously the pandemic happened, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I teach online. Yeah, are you living in Taipei right now? I'm living in Taipei right now, but we have yeah. plans to move to Zhanghua in the future. How come? <laughs> Wait, Zhanghua. We because oh, she's from Zhanghua. Uh, okay, it's to be closer to family then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, okay, she's from okay. Zhanghua. Family's there. Of course, I want to live in Huarian, of course. Yes. But she's from Zhanghua and her all her family, well, her sister's in Taichung and all her family's mm. in Zhanghua. And we, are, we yeah. have plans on having kids. And and so I feel like, okay, it's I can go to Huarian anytime I want. It's not that far. Yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is better for both of us. And housing in Zhanghua is affordable. And we just recently yeah. bought a property. And Got we're going to move there okay. the end of this year or be around around or before the next Chinese New Year. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Mm. So I'm, I'm excited because yeah. Taipei is not my favorite city. Oh, okay. Good to know because, yeah, I, I'm not the biggest fan either. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't like is crowd. a lot wider. Yeah, I, I, I like I like Kaohsiung. Yeah. Um. I have friends there, and I just I just like the lifestyle in Kaohsiung. Taipei is just kind of too crowded for me. Yeah. Too expensive too for me. City. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. Wow. Okay. So let's go back to the question because I was curious about what you will bring to your cross cultural marriage and family, right? Like, mm. is there anything that you always do, like? From your your family side, and then anything that she does that she wants to keep, and then you kind of integrate into your marriage. Mm. That's a good question. Uh, let me think. I can, as a culture, our culture is pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, we give red envelopes, envelopes, right? During yes. Chinese New Year, yeah. right? Mm, I would talk more about habits mm, okay um, and maybe a little bit of food because our culture is very is very similar uh as for food i'm a abc i'm an american kid i grew up in america right i, I love <laughs> i like to go to costco right <laughs> yes do you like in and out as well i like in and out Yes, mm. uh, i don't i don't eat a lot of meat but in the u.s once in a while i will eat in and out do you have in and out in Colorado? Now, yes. Oh, it's, now yes. Oh, yes. wow. Okay, yeah. It's it's starting to get more. It's like wow. Okay, all right, yeah. all right. For food, yeah, I, I would. She doesn't, you know, she's Asian, right? She doesn't like to eat bread a lot. <laughs> she was like, man, ever since I met you, I definitely ate. I have definitely eaten more <laughs> bread than ever. Yeah, because yeah. I, I would I would get bread. I would get bagel, right? And I, would, I would, and I would. I love to eat bread, right? But she doesn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She eats rice. <laughs> she eats rice and noodles, mm, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, for and and another thing is, you know, she grew up in the countryside. She grew up like in like a really small town. There's no train, okay. right? She lives in a small town. Okay. And she she eats she eats weird food. You know? <laughs> Well, she'd be happy to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she. What is you know, weird for you? Let's talk about it's it. It's like it's like certain part of pig and pork, yeah. right? They eat like chicken butt, right? Yeah, of course we yeah. do. It's kind of weird, right? Uh, and the it chicken, is. like like por- uh, pig ears, right? Yes, yes. And then, uh, you don't like it? No, I, it, it's fine. I I, yeah. I can't say I don't like it. I like it with beer because it's kind of salty, right? 
Yes, Lu Wei, right? They call it Wu Lu Wei.、Yes. I mean, I would, I would never go buy it. I would never say, "Hey, I want some pig ears today. I want some chicken <laughs> butt today." <laughs> <laughs> oh but, yeah, that's yeah, that's so relatable. That's true. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But but when I go to her her, her countryside, right? She grew up in、uh, this San, this place called、uh, is San He Yuan. It's like a yes. In the middle, the shop, there's like、yeah. a little yard, right?、Mm-hmm. When we go back, she would go go to her. Childhood stand to buy、yeah. those. They, they call it cian shu ji, right? They call it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They, they, it's like all fried. I mean, I would never say I, I want some that some of that tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, I would eat it, right?、Yeah. I would,、okay. I would eat it with them and drink、yeah. beer. But、uh, other than the, other than that, I won't. I'm not too crazy about the food. Um,、mm. o- obviously, I think Cantonese food is better than Taiwanese food because I'm biased. <laughs> Yeah, my、uh, grandparents still say the same. Yeah, yeah. Cantonese <laughs> is just better, man. <laughs>、mm, yes, yes. What do you miss from the U.S. besides the bread and the buns and the bagels? Oh, what do I miss from the U.S.?、Um, I miss my family for sure.、Oh. I grew up with my cousins. I'm I'm really close to my cousins.、Yeah. I miss my family. I live.、Uh, I miss like certain things about it. I miss.、Um, Hmm, that's a that's a good that's a good question. I, I sometimes I miss the weather.、Mm, sometimes I miss the weather because it's, it's drier. Yeah. yeah, I miss that. I miss the the some of the national parks in the、mm-hmm. U.S. You know,、yes. in, in California where I live, I could drive a few hours. I can go to Yosemite. It's like yes, the national park compared to Taiwan and the United States is completely different. It's a、that's、different at、right. a different scale. Yes. I what else? What else do I miss?、Uh, I I definitely miss Cantonese food. Oh, there is ta- Cantonese food in Taipei. No, it's not, not good. good. It's not good.、Oh, okay. Like when when it says Shanggang, when it says Hong Kong, something, <laughs> I have to like investigate. I have to make sure if I do decide to eat there, I would go in、okay. there and speak, try to speak Cantonese. And if they don't speak Cantonese, I am not eating there. Okay, I will refer you、uh, one in in Gaoxiong, where my grandparents always go. Fa Cai. Uh, no, it's called it's called Zhongxing, but now the name has changed. Oh, okay, okay. There, hey, there is one Gaoxiong place that I go to. There is、okay. one place. Uh, but, but but a lot of places that I went to before, like、okay. it says, it would say Hong Kong something, and it's like, yeah, no, it's not good. Not authentic.、Got、it's not authentic. It. Yeah, I'm kind of、yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I try to save it for. When I go to San Francisco or when I go、mm-hmm. to Macau, my, my、mm-hmm. mom still lives in Macau, right? I would save yeah, my yeah. Cantonese food there. I won't touch any Cantonese food in Taiwan. Yeah, got <laughs> it. Oh, yeah. I I think I can relate to that. It's like I don't re- really eat a lot of Taiwanese food, or like in India, I don't eat lots of Chinese food over there. It's just like it brings down my yeah. My homesickness, and also、yeah. I become more disappointed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's like egg tarts. You know, I I try to,、yeah. I try to, you know, egg tarts are some Hong Kong and Macau, and then、mm-hmm. I see egg tarts.、Yeah. Somebody trying to sell egg tarts. It's like, okay, I try, I'll try it. I try it、okay. once. I'm like, man, it's not good, man.、Don't. So it's not good in KFC. Oh, actually,、the、egg tart. Talking about egg tarts in Taiwan, the best egg tarts is in KFC. Yeah,、uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those、oh, are the, I miss it. Those are the best. Those are the best. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, this、yeah. is so interesting. Yeah, because you reminded me that I've never really interviewed that many foreigners in Taiwan, and then your perspective is just pretty refreshing. Yeah. Wait. So another question: Is your mom happier about you making the move to to Taiwan and marrying a Taiwanese? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why? Because I used to date white girls. Ah. Okay, I, so you're coming back to your cultural roots. Yeah, she thinks well, it's number, great. Number one is closer. Like she、okay. could just, like before the pandemic, I would go back to Macau every three months. She can just fly an hour, hour and a half, and come see me anytime, right? But obviously now it's a lot more difficult, and she can communicate. My mom can speak some Mandarin, right? She can communicate with her. Back in the days, I didn't think about this. I would just oh okay she speak English or whatever but I was living in the United States but as I as I grow older as I travel more as I get to know my mom more,、uh, I think a little differently. I wouldn't、uh, even though even though if I marry like a white girl or black girl, if she can speak Mandarin or Chinese or a, a language I can communicate with my family, that's fine. 
but they have to be able to communicate. I don't want to like bring bring a wife to to my mom and they can't communicate. Right? Like I I just think a little different now. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's a, such a transition for you as yeah. well. It's yeah. like from coming from your cultural root and then to San Francisco is like, ah, okay, all out. But now you're trying to find your way back and and there's a different curve. Yeah, yeah, def- I I definitely is trying to go back to my roots after mm. living in Taiwan. I'm I'm closer to my roots more more than ever because yeah. I want more. It's like it's like I have a little taste of it. You know, in 2008 when I was in Beijing, I have a little taste of it. And I mm. in 2010 I started learning Chinese. I have a little taste of it and I just want more. And I just like it. I don't know. I, I'm I'm proud of speaking Mandarin now. You know, yeah. and obviously speaking funny Mandarin is kind of, it's fun for <laughs> a lot of people, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I can see that you also enjoy your American part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do, I do. I, you know, some like, uh, you know, talk about bread earlier, right? Um, mm. You know, we would go to Costco more because yes. of, of me, right? Yes. And she, I introduced yogurt to her, right? Like, for example, oh, yogurt. she doesn't eat it? Well, she, b- before her. There's, there's in Taiwan yogurt is very expensive and like a small little container is so expensive yes. in Taiwan right yep yep so yep. so I just started making yogurt just started making yeah, yeah. I introduced well she came to San Francisco at the end of 2019 right to visit mm. me and we went to I show, I show her different places and you know I took her to Trader Joe's yeah like she Ooh. loves Trader Joe's she went Fancy. in there she was like yeah. oh well this is this is goat yogurt. We don't have that in Taiwan. And then she she loves it. She would go to Trader Joe's and yo- buy yogurt and buy avocado, blueberry mm. because those 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 items are very expensive in Taiwan. That is right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she it's loves so common it. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she she yeah. loves it. And after that, I think the trip to San Francisco really make her like yogurt a lot more. Yeah. And and, and obviously see a little bit of your culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she read, she did some research on the benefits of eating yogurt every day. Mm, and yeah. you know, right now we make our own yogurt, and we've been eating it every day with fruits. We eat it with fruits. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So you gave a great example about how to blend two two persons' uh, culture into one, and yeah. and I can see like there are different traits and all that. Last question. Let's talk about why you wanted to start your podcast, Dare to Travel, or Lang Yo Tian Ya. Lang Yo Tian. So <laughs> it's funny. Actually, you, you and I we started at the same time last year mm. when I went back to Macau. When I was in quarantine, under quarantine, it was in August. It was in August, and then I just you know you have a, t- a lot of time to think about different things. So I thought, okay, well, I can't travel right now. A lot of people can't travel right now, but how can I help other people? So uh, this is like the the base question: How can I help other people to encourage them to travel more? Because I right now I see you know twenty year old, twenty five year old travel. I'm like, yeah, I, I wish I could. Oh, I wish I I knew about traveling when I was your age. I didn't start a tra- I didn't start traveling until I was close to thirty years old. So I wanted to help people, and I said, mm, okay. So I talked to my friend Truman about this during my quarantine. Like I said, I have a lot of time. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's just start to do a podcast and talk about different topics and try to encourage more people to travel more. Not just travel more, just, but, you know, if you're not happy with your life, make a change. Do something else. Experience yeah. a different kind of life. The, the, mm. the world doesn't evolve around you. You know, you yeah. in a, you're in a small bubble, right? If you if you don't if you don't like your life, then change it. So we wanted to help other people. So we started it last year. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and the podcast is in Mandarin, and it's mm. kind of difficult for me. My Chinese is not <laughs> that good. Your Chinese yeah. is way better than mine. <laughs> oh, thank you. I I grew up speaking it. <laughs> yeah, but you, I didn't speak Cantonese. Yeah, but you you moved to what uh, the U.S. when you were twelve, right? No, 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 no! I didn't. I grew up in Taiwan. Oh, I grew- moved to the U.S. when I was thirty-one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Don't worry about it. I am not an ABC. Oh, <laughs> I'm from Taiwan. 
But you, yeah, you okay? You grew up. You moved to when you were thirty one. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought I thought you moved to the U.S. like in your teens or. Oh no no no! And I then you moved up, back so to Taiwan. To yeah, so when I was two and a half, I moved back to Taiwan. I was okay. born in the U.S. Uh-huh. Yeah, so so I grew up in Taiwan all the way elementary kindergarten all the way to masters, all in oh. Taiwan. Oh wow! So, so don't feel so bad, la. <laughs> don't feel so bad, la. <laughs> I think you're you're speaking Mandarin as a third language. That's awesome already. Yeah, speaking speaking is no problem, but like reading, editing. Yeah, yeah. I learned I learned I learned a lot of Chinese just text messaging, but um, mm. yeah. But we talk yeah. about like editing, um, like writing Chinese, typing Chinese. I'm really slow. Wow, it's okay. it's a struggle for me. <laughs> Yeah. Take your time to edit mine because I know I spoke so fast. <laughs> yeah, in the beginning, I was like, I I had to pay attention. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. So, um, the Duncan and I actually like um Duncan Truman and I we have another episode on their podcast, and then we should be uh, able to release it at the same time. So, if the listeners are interested, please do go to their site. If you're Mandarin listener, because I did it in Mandarin, so go ahead and listen to it. How can people find you, Duncan? Oh okay. Um, other your listeners can find me on IG, uh, follow Duncan, or mm-hmm. uh, on Facebook. You can do the same, follow Duncan. Um, also, you can visit our podcast uh, yeah. website, uh, www.daretotravelpodcast.com. You can find us there, and you can you know on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can type in Dare to Travel, and you can find us there as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and you also teach English online, right? So if people have interest in learning, can they find you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can, like I said, IG, Facebook. You can you can find me there. Okay. Uh, try to help people online. Well, right now you can only do it online, right? Yes, yes. But it's also very convenient. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah. sometimes, like, like I get frustrated teaching online because I'm not there, and ah. and I try to educate people. I'm like, okay. No, this is not the way to learn English. Like you, I know you just memorize everything in Chinese, but that's not the way to learn yeah. English. <laughs> mm, that's right. Yeah. So, listeners, if you're interested in ESL learning, please go ahead and find Duncan. Maybe he will be your tutor. <laughs> yeah. So let's do a recap for the episode. What do we talk about today? Oh, you asked mm. me. No, okay. I mean, I I think we talk about your background first. Yeah. And then I'm just looking at adults. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you move from Hong Kong to Macau to San Francisco and your identities and it's all mixed with different cultures and all that. Um, what else? Mm, my tra- a little bit of my travel story, uh, how, how I um, have my struggles in Taiwan, identity yeah. issues in Taiwan, yeah. right? I have to because I, I felt embarrassed, right? Yeah. Uh, because I didn't speak Chinese. A uh, little bit, little bit of my work experience. Mm. Mm, little bit, little bit of my uh, how I met, how I met my wife. Yeah, <laughs> how we, love story. how, how uh, we, how I think the so, certain foods are weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Bring how two she culture into one. How she didn't want to eat bread every every That's day. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we talk about like um, a little future, a little change a transition that kind of like in thoughts and all that and and in the last piece we talk about your podcast and how to find you so yeah yeah all right so listeners please do follow them and listen to a podcast i think they put a lot of efforts on it and a lot of topics are really in- interesting so i listen to some of them and i'm pretty sure that you'll benefit from those episodes as well thank you so much for coming duncan yeah no problem anytime Thanks for listening to Chai with Ping. If you think someone will benefit from this episode, don't forget to share it with them. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. If you like my show, you can buy me some chai with small donations. Details are in the episode notes. Till next time.